Hello, my name is Sonam Bean and welcome to the 65th edition of Airhex TV. And um, so let's go to the topics. First, um, some uh, conference reports. So I'm actually back from Java for Kubernetes conference in Orlando. And um, it was prequel. So it was the, uh, the first edition of the conference, a very small, limited, uh, almost invite only conference. And uh, next year is going to be bigger. So the conference was J4K, one Kubernetes, one Java, all clouds. And um, they were vendors from Microsoft and um, oh, my vendors from Microsoft. They were speakers from Microsoft, uh, Google, Red Hat, and uh, two independent. And um, I actually learned a lot. I enjoyed the whole experience. And uh, next year, the conference is going to, I think, in May, uh, there is uh, going to be uh, open to everyone. And um, this reminds me a little bit of the early Java ones. So um, um, it might be fun actually uh, next year. And what I did, I um, I um, I wanted actually to implement as always a, a micro profile Jakarta application. But at the breakfast, there were some questions. Um, so I actually changed the agenda and uh, actually uh, focused on uh, the evolution of micro profile and Jakarta E and covered um, a Quarkus um, towards the end. So um, now uh, breaking news, um, the uh, there is a conference sh uh, session called Shrinking Techniques, which be is on online. So I will publish it tomorrow from DevOps PL. So I delivered uh, a session with uh, lots of questions and it turned out that it became top 10 uh, conference session from, uh, from DevOps PL. Uh, which is actually remarkable because uh, um, this was, I think, the only Java <laughs> top 10 uh, session. The others were uh, like, you know, functions as service and clouds and so forth. And um, yeah, so uh, good to know that micro profile in Jakarta E are actually that popular. Okay, so now we cover that. Then uh, let's see what else. Oh, I um, actually... Um, I delivered a workshop for a company, and what I did, I uh, they asked me about uh, distributed tracing and Jaeger tracing and Quarkus, and um, so what I did, I recorded a screencast um, where I uh, set up from scratch uh, Jaeger tracing and uh, develop a microprofile application with distributed tracing, and deployed everything on OpenShift. So if you, I got uh, several questions here at AirHexDV regarding microprofile distributed tracing. And uh, now, uh, now there is a screencast. So if you're interested, go into it. Um, also, I got lots of questions about um, pipelines. So what I did, I created a Jenkins pipeline and open source that. So this is now uh, part of the status test open source project. The project is a little bit older. And I use it for testing, so it's three years old, testing um, uh, Web components and web standards front ends, and uh, what uh, well, this project comprises already uh, the microservice and the system test. So what I did, I just um, added uh, a a uh, Jenkins uh, uh, pipeline to it, and uh, and now you can run. Uh, so there's a, like the pipeline comprises, I would say, so 60 to 70 percent of stages, w which I actually using in production. So um, then what you probably already saw, sometimes if I'm starting the Maven archetype and the internet connection is slow or um, more likely the, um, the uh, archetype or the sonotype central is slow, um, then it takes 10 to 20 seconds until something happens. So the, um, the archetype just stucks or stops or blocks. So I'm not able to generate a project. So um, what I did, I experimented a little bit, and there is a flag archetype catalog local. So what you will have to do is you run the, um, the, the archetype the first time. So you have to wait once 20 seconds, and they run just with the archetype catalog local. And then um, it is very fast. So uh, now I solved the problem, which uh, is really nice. Then I'm also back from Java user group uh, Nürnberg, and um, where the first speaker talked about Quarkus. This was someone from Red Hat, uh, Mr. Peel. And then I did a little bit cloud-native Java-y. 
And what I did, I started with um, with standalone Java application, and then uh, extended uh, at the end. I think I ended with Quar no, uh, I didn't uh, mention Quarkus because the speaker before me did it. So what I did, I pushed a Payara S2I image to OpenShift, and um, yeah, and reconfigured the application and scaled the application. And was um, open to questions, so and and it was well received. So there was actually no negative comments. Um, so so thank you for attending the session, Java User Group. Okay, um, yeah, this uh this is the image. So and and it was extremely hot. So it's like I, I think they were forty degrees, one of the hottest day. So now forty degrees Celsius, of course. <laughs> Okay, and now uh, all the courses are going well, so I'm already, I'm already looking forward to um, to December edition and November edition of Airhex at Munich Airport. So um, the um, the um, the the cloud Jakarta -E doing even better than the <laughs> than the web frontend stuff, which is uh, remarkable. But uh, yeah, uh, seems like all uh, workshops will take place, and of course the podcast. So. Today I released an op uh, episode, so if you are quick, you can already um, hear it or listen to it, and um, I will uh, announce it um, probably tomorrow. And uh, it is an uh, interview or conversation with Dimitris Andriadis from Red Hat about um, um, his road to Quarkus and uh, why Quarkus is an interesting project. And uh, so I really enjoyed the conversation. So I have to say I really enjoyed the um, AXFM conversation because... Um, yeah, you can you know you can talk from developer to developer, and uh, it seems like uh, the Java people are nice people. So um, then uh, also a short conversation with uh, Sebastian Daschner, so friend of the show and uh, Airhex alumni. And Sebastian asked me, you know, to uh, to discuss the uh, relation between Microprofile and Jakarta. -y. So there was not nice short chat, and. Um, uh, which was also amazing, the episode with uh, Amelia. And uh, she is a mathematician, but um, she is uh, you know, the power woman behind Tommy Tribe. And we had a nice chat about uh, math and um, Java -y and open source. Um, she is really into open source. And this basically what was. And of course, Jarek Gratajski, I think this was already covered. No, not yet. So um, also interesting. So this is... Um, Truly interesting episode because Yarek, uh, I, I saw him over and over again in my talks, and he asked me nice questions or or a good question in a nice way, and he looked for me like a like uh, like an uh, how to call it. He he says he's a wizard. For me, it was like a knight. So it was you no know, a leather um, a leather clothes with uh, and, and and black long hair, and uh, then I invited him, and and it turns out he. This is a wizard who who doesn't like magic, so which is really really fun. So we, I think, we covered everything. And now, oh, the very last thing, there is one interesting episode in the pipeline um, about the startup called Tech Eleven, and it turned out this um, so uh, long short, uh, very very interesting, uh, very interesting. Um, background so uh, there's Matthias Reinig he invited me I think five to six years ago to a company for Java e workshop and they liked what they saw and they based a uh, system on Java e and then Matthias uh, became independent or or, or, or or started a new startup called Tech 11 and they are pushing thin wars to production and clouds so there's like insurance as a service and they had an interview with developers and they were amazed that developers delivered you know thin code thin wars and it turned out that the developers listened to ehex tv and matthias uh, knew me uh, from from workshops and uh, small world and now the developers have job at tech 11 so they are still hiring so if you uh, like what you see with java e micro profile thin wars you don't like bloat and uh, cargo cult you can apply, and seems like uh, uh, Tech Eleven are nice people. So I only interviewed him with uh, via at Airhex FM. But um, yeah, if you like, if you need a job, you know, with Thin Wars, uh, try to apply. And yeah, and if you apply, you know, don't start with the esoteric stuff. 
um, it's just down to earth. So I think done almost. Now, first question. And this is um, from Alexei Mal Malkov Ma Alexei Malkovsky. And he asked me, so there's like, uh, he has um, two security realms, LDAP and database. And he asked me now, um, he would like to use both or has to use both inside HTTP authentication mechanism. So, and he would like you know, uh, to, to, uh, to have like a priority or would like to prefer one over another. And the question is how to do this. So first, priority is the right approach. So priorities are built in into 375 security. What you could also do, you can implement an identity store like a facade and inject the LDAP and database, your own um, stores. They could be you know, two distinct uh, implementation of an interface or even two completely different classes without any common interface. And the identity store would act as a facade and then you can decide I know to, uh, which uh, which service to ask. So you have both possibilities: priority out of the box, or you use you know uh, the identity store as an empty facade and redirect uh, the uh, traffic to one or another. Okay, now the next one, Dempile. Uh, this the um, friend of the show asked me: Have you did a cluster of prior applications within the OpenShift platform with Hazelcalt cache enabled? Um, and, and he, he asked me whether I could record a video about that. I would say, first, this is a proprietary, f proprietary feature of uh, Payara, and it can change at any time, and it's very, very specific. So I don't think I would record a video about that. But um, if you attend, you know, AirHacks, ask me about that so I could uh, prepare something. For instance, there is the, uh, how, they, how is the day called, like, uh, Beyond Jakarta-y? So we do, um, I usually in the past, I showed already Hazelcast. So um, I could do that, but um, I don't think I managed to, to, to record a video. So my, my video queue is uh, full uh, because of my client questions and AirHacks TV questions. And this one is very specific. So um, he asked me, um, Hazelcast is integrated with Payara both and full, but can we still use uh, Hazelcast with Open Liberty? Uh, sure you can. So what you can actually do, what I did in the past, I uh, started Hazelcast, I'm not even sure whether it was Whitefly or Payara, but what I also had is a standalone Hazelcast node. So like uh, Java main processes, which booted Hazelcast, and um, I was able to uh, to communicate with that. So it, you, you have to use this, the same Hazelcast version. This is important. And uh, I think they are called channels or uh, cache names. I think they are cache names. Okay, and um, is there an alternative to manage JPA L2 cache in a cluster? Sure, there is. Um, so uh, the Eclipse link, for instance, uses, so this is why you probably would like to use uh, Hazelcast, uses so-called cache coordination. So search for cache coordination Eclipse link. And in the past, we used JMS to distribute uh, cache invalidations messages without Hazelcast. And you can use Hazelcast as JMS replacement or as communication layer. So... Um, yeah, there is. And uh, with um, Hibernate, you can use InfiniSpan for cache coordination. Or there is in Hibernate, there is no cache co or coordination. You can use InfiniSpan as, lecon, as, lecon, as second level cache. Okay, um, now number three. And uh, this is like a you know, classic microservice question. In a microservice architecture, in certain cases, we have an entity that exists in both microservices and uh, client management and billing microservice. In this case, the client entity must be in both domains. How could we manage such situation? Copy and paste. So this is the answer. So if you have the entity copy and paste, no shared uh, dependencies. And what I prefer to do is, um, you could just use a JSON object, for instance, and uh, and then you are golden. So with JSON object, it, it would just, um, just work. Um, so the point is, don't even try, you know, to have a shared jar. If you have a shared jar, I would like to upgrade the jar. You will have to redeliver all the microservices or redeploy all the microservices, which is um, a really bad idea. Now, uh, Berger, 1994, uh, seems like a young developer, I guess. So, um, born in 1994, I think. In our project, we are using EJBs for service action. Access to database, access to other systems, and so on. Sounds like command pattern to me. And we are using CDI beans for for uh, our uh, user interface actions, view scope, session scopes, and so on. 
Um, so it means like a thing you have just Java server faces application in one presentation package and a business package with EJBs. If someone wants to customize CDI beans, they are using the annotation specializes. And specializes is not inheritance rather than uh, is not specialization rather than inheritance, which works pretty fine. Yes, but I did not find a solution for EJBs. No, EJBs, and it's a really bad idea to use inheritance with EJBs. So you could do this, but it's not as nice as uh, CDI. Is there any solution to customize to customize EGBs like specializes for CDI? No, and I th don't think it is needed. So what I usually do, I have a facade EGB, and behind the facade EGB are just POJOs. They can be CDI beans or not. They are just managed beans which are injected. So the idea is you have one facade which uh, there is no inheritance at all because um, you, I, I would say I never had the need, you know, to have a facade with inheritance. So there is no inheritance, just plain POJO. At stateless, and what you gain with at stateless, um, you have less to write. So you don't have to write transactional scope or request scope, for instance, right? So um, so you have the facade, and behind you have CDI beans with specializes, and you are golden. What you can also do, you can drop EGBs and replace at stateless with request scoped and transactional, for instance. So similar semantics to EGBs, you, you, you can add, for instance, Prometheus annotations, so you get monitoring. And you get add, uh, you can add uh, fault tolerance, and you get throttling, so you get uh, simi si uh, similar semantics out of the box. And with Quarkus, you get um, uh, the same or even better performance. Okay, um, is it a good practice to use CDI application scope instead of stateless? I would say I would rather use um, request scoped because application scoped is a singleton, and stateless are not singleton. So um, the 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 the, um, the right uh, the right question would be. Uh, application scope instead of singleton. We would replace all EGBs with CDI beans. So you can do this, but not application scope rather than request scoped and measure the performance because the performance will be 10 to 20% uh, worse, which usually does not matter. Why not? Because, uh, why it doesn't matter? Because if you hit a database, you know, no one cares about the few milliseconds which you will lose here. Okay, uh, Tunji dear, ask me, Hi Adam, can I trust Payara Java Mail IP for sending emails in a production-like environment? Yes, we, we're actually doing this right now, but um, I was less involved and the developer just did it. But um, but uh, what I do, for instance, if you register to the uh, workshops.adambean.com, uh, a mail is sent to me and I'm not using the built-in Payara uh, mail service rather than I just um, instantiating the session um, manually because there is no added benefit. You know, Java Java mail is not transactional, for instance. So there are no added benefits you, um, um, using, you know, everything with applications. The, the only benefit is if you would run on OpenShift and it's, let's say, the Java mail is the mail, you know, is the main main use case of your application. Then you, what you could do with Java mail, you can use placeholders like env dash and then reconfigure the domain from the application server on start. But you can do equally well by injecting at config property at inject with um, with uh, micro profile config. Okay, now he also asked to engineer. Hi Adam. Please, how to exclude resource classes from being being authenticated by Java authentication mechanism? And uh, usually, what happens is you you can secure specific web resource collections, and you can secure them with uh, with WebXML or with um, with uh, with annotation with annotations. And there's annotation deny all or permit all. So what you can do, you can have a method with permit all, and then uh, you should be allowed, you know, just to access the method. And usually, if you are protecting something here, uh, the other thing, smart deal, DNS, DNS, smart deal ng here, uh, you don't have to specify it here, so it should be just unprotected. So um, what it means is you are just, you know, specifying what you would like to be protected or, or, and what you don't like to be protected, you not specify that. Another possibility is you could use no web resource collection and add, you know, the guest role and protect user guest roles and this would be just all unauthenticated users. Uh, so it would be like admin, user, and then you have security role like guest. Um, yeah, but uh, check out permit all annotation. 
And uh, the last question for today, uh, uh, nine hours ago, so fresh one. We are trying to migrate one small spring project to Jakarta E and we couldn't figure out exactly a shortcut about how to replace data repository, CRUD repository. So CRUD repository is not a part of MicroProfile or Jakarta E on the standard, but there are lots of you know third-party implementations. For instance, data module from Delta Spike, um, you could use that. It looks very similar and is an extension from a CDI extension. I'm not using this in my projects because it adds additional magic from my perspective with just a little benefit. So I prefer just to use an you know, entity manager, which is injected right right away. And what what it basically means is if you oh if you took take a look on that, how would it look like entity manager find um, find user by ID? This would be not iterable rather than just post find by user ID. Oh, find by user ID. So you you will write a query like. Um, uh, select post from uh, p.id or pu.user.id and you, you get the iterable. So, um, But if you like to just have go with interfaces and the implementation should be generated for you, check out uh, Delta Spike and Data Module. Also interesting, if you are open for new stuff, there is a Panache uh, ORM Quarkus. Uh, this is a an, an really interesting... Uh, so I would actually prefer this. So how it looks like, um, you you don't interact with the entity manager. You just extend from Panache entity, and all the all the queries are inside the entity with static methods. So it's really domain driven. This is what I what I like about that. What I actually don't like about that is not a standard. So you are completely Quarkus dependent. But in the in the in the past you were completely Spring depending dependent. So now I mean who cares, right? So you could just use that and. You are as dependent as before, so um, yeah, it really depends on the on the on the mindset. So done. It's amazing. So let's see. Perfect. No questions. No questions. And empty chat means summer. So what happens here? Also nothing. So I would say, thank you for watching. See you next month. And um, there is also, uh, next month is September, and in September there's a CH Open workshop in, uh, in the CH Open workshop Tage is in, in Switzerland. So I also will uh, take part on that. So somewhere you can hear, um, yeah, you have to register, but this is a, a workshop target CH is like, um, it's like a open source or Java user group, you see Java user group. Um, organization and uh, let's see whether I will find somewhere the lightweight full stack so this is what I will deliver and uh, the maximum um, there are 130 attendees in total and of course Jakarta EE there is going to be a, a live stream conference which I will attend and I will do probably the MC and deliver a keynote-like session or it is even a technical keynote, I don't know, but um, it will be absolutely slideless and I will code all the time and the attendance is free, you will have to register, but uh, yeah, um, I would, I'm really looking forward towards the first you know, open Jakarta One conference, so Jakarta One live stream, so Jakarta One Sounds similar to Java one, so therefore I really like it. And you can register, but it should be very free. So, and where is my session? Here. Yeah. From Ivar, one great session. And by the way, I attended a J4K uh, session from Ivar Grimstad, and it, it was great, really great. And um, so you should um, look at this session. And uh, Josh Juno is also Kevin Sutter, so there are there's lots of content going on. And so really really looking forward to uh to this conference so we have this we have ch open and uh then wjx and other conferences but uh yeah thank you and see you next month